I'm hearing a lot about how Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, Amazon VPC, enables you to build a secure virtual network in the AWS cloud. Can you tell me more about it? Yes, you can easily create your own virtual private cloud. No hardware or physical data centers required. You can define your own network space and control how your network and the Amazon EC2 resources inside your network are exposed to the Internet. What sort of security options do I have over my virtual network? You can leverage the security options in Amazon VPC to provide more granular access both to and from the Amazon EC2 instances in your virtual network. For example, you can create a public-facing subnet for your web servers that have access to the Internet and place your back-end systems such as databases or application servers in a private-facing subnet with no Internet access. What if I don't want to connect my secure network to the Internet? and want to restrict access to it only from within our corporate infrastructure. You can easily create a hardware virtual private network, VPN connection, between your corporate data center and your Amazon VPC, and then leverage the AWS cloud as an extension of your corporate data center. Interesting. Can you tell me more about the security features? Advanced features such as security groups and network access control lists can be used to enable inbound and outbound filtering at the instance level and subnet level. In addition, you can store data in Amazon S3 and restrict access so that it's only accessible from instances in your VPC. You can also choose to launch dedicated instances which run on hardware dedicated to a single customer for additional isolation. How do I control the flow of data? VPC route tables give you the ability to control how your traffic is routed within your VPC between subnets and to or from the Internet or your corporate data center. Can you tell me a little more? It is actually very simple to get started. You can create a VPC quickly and easily using the AWS Management Console. You can select one of the common network setups that best match your needs using the VPC wizard. Subnets, IP ranges, route tables, and security groups are automatically created for you, so you can concentrate on creating the applications to run in your VPC. What if my requirements change? How quickly can I modify my AWS resources? Amazon resources in a VPC can be modified and scaled up or down. Anybody using AWS can use Amazon VPC, from individuals hosting a single web server to large organizations that require thousands of machines. In fact, when you launch new Amazon EC2 instances, by default they will be launched into a VPC. You also have the option of launching instances outside of VPC if required. And what kind of solutions are people building inside VPCs? Amazon EC2 is being used inside VPCs for purposes such as hosting basic web applications, like blogs or simple websites, where you can gain the additional layers of privacy and security afforded by Amazon VPC. You can help secure a website by creating security group rules which allow the web server to respond to inbound HTTP and SSL requests from the Internet, while simultaneously prohibiting the web server from initiating outbound connections. You can also host multi-tiered web applications inside a VPC to strictly enforce access and security restrictions between your web servers, application servers, and databases. You can launch web servers in a publicly accessible subnet and application servers and databases in non-publicly accessible subnets. The application servers and databases can't be directly accessed from the Internet, but they can still access the Internet via a NAT instance for tasks such as downloading patches. You can control access between the servers and subnets using inbound and outbound packet filtering provided by network access control lists and security groups. VPC route tables give you the ability to control how your traffic is routed within your VPC, between subnets and to or from the Internet or your corporate data center. Does everything need to be in the Amazon data centers? We have databases within our corporate network that we would like to keep on-premises. You can keep whatever you wish on-premises. You can easily create a VPC where instances in one subnet, such as web servers, communicate with the Internet, while instances in another subnet, such as application servers, communicate with databases on your corporate network. An IPsec VPN connection between your VPC and your corporate network help secure all communication between the application servers in the cloud 
and databases in your data center. One nice thing about Amazon VPC is the console wizard provides you with four templates that can be used as a starting point. You can easily extend and customize your VPC to meet your requirements. How do I access and manage my Amazon VPC? There are a number of options. The Amazon VPC console, the AWS command line interface, Amazon EC2 command line interface tools, and AWS tools for Windows PowerShell. How much does it cost? There is no additional charge for using Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, aside from the normal Amazon EC2 usage charges. As usual, you only pay for what you use as you use it. There are no minimum fees and no upfront commitments. Awesome. I think I'm ready to get started. AWS provides free online training with a self-paced lab to get you started, without having to open an account. That's cool. How do I take the free training? Before you get started, let me show you how easy it is to use the Amazon VPC wizard to create a VPC by logging into my AWS account. This wizard will create a VPC, network with private IP addresses, attach an internet gateway to it, and a subnet. That'd be great. Thanks. Anyone can sign up for a free AWS account and use the AWS Management Console. Here you can access AWS products and services, such as Amazon VPC. On the VPC dashboard, click Start VPC Wizard. Select the first option, VPC with a single public subnet, and click Select. In the VPC name box, type a name, such as My VPC. The confirmation page shows the site arranges that we'll use for this VPC and subnet, and the hardware tenancy setting. The confirmation page also displays the subnet's availability zone. Leave the default settings unchanged and click Create VPC to create a VPC, Internet Gateway, Subnet, and Route Table. When the work completes, a status window confirms that your VPC has been successfully created. Click OK to close the status window and return to the VPC dashboard. The console displays your default VPC and the VPC that you just created. Select My VPC, the VPC that you just created. The console displays the DNS settings for the VPC in the Details pane. To display information about Internet Gateways, click Internet Gateways in the Navigation pane. You have one Internet Gateway for your default VPC and another for the VPC that you just created. The VPC that you just created has two route tables. The VPC came with a main route table by default, and the VPC wizard created a custom route table in addition. Your subnet is associated with the custom route table, which means that we use the routes in that table to determine how the traffic for the subnet flows. If you add a new subnet to your VPC, it uses the main route table by default. You can view the route tables here. What about security? such as a firewall. A security group acts as a virtual firewall to control the traffic allowed into its associated instances. Let's go back to the console and I will show you how to create a security group. Open the Amazon VPC console. Click Security Groups in the navigation pane. Click the Create Security Group button. Populate the following fields. And then click Yes, Create. To add rules to the Web Server SG Security Group, select the Web Server SG Security Group that you just created. The Details pane includes a tab for information about the security group, plus tabs for working with its inbound and outbound rules. On the Inbound Rules tab, click Edit and add rules for inbound traffic as follows. Select HTTP from the type list and enter 0.0.0.0/0 in the source field. Click Add Another Rule. Then select HTTPS from the type list and enter 0.0.0.0/0 in the source field. Click Add Another Rule. Then select SSH from the type list. Enter your network's public IP address range in the source field. Note. If you use 0.0.0.0 slash 0, 
you enable all IP addresses to access your instance using SSH. This is acceptable for the short exercise, but it's unsafe for production environments. In production, you'll authorize only a specific IP address or range of addresses to access your instance. Then click Save. Now that we have a security group, we can now launch Amazon EC2 instances into our VPC. What if I no longer need this VPC? Will I still be charged for the created resources? To make sure you are not charged, you can clean up your resources by deleting the VPC. Before you can delete a VPC, you must terminate any instances that are running in the VPC. Deleting a VPC also deletes resources that are associated with the VPC, such as subnets, security groups, network ACLs, DHCP option sets, route tables, and internet gateways. In any case, it is good practice to delete resources that you no longer need. Let's go back to the AWS Management Console, and I'll show you how easy this is. Open the Amazon VPC Console. Click Your VPCs in the Navigation pane. Select the VPC, named My VPC, and from the Actions drop-down, click the Delete button. When prompted for confirmation, click Yes, Delete. Hey, I'm spending a lot of time and energy managing AWS resources. Can you tell me how to do this more efficiently? Have you looked at AWS CloudFormation? It simplifies provisioning and managing resources on AWS. Perfect. How does it work? Well, you can create templates for the services and applications you want to build on AWS. AWS CloudFormation uses those templates to quickly and reliably provision those services or applications, called stacks. You can also easily update or replicate the stacks as needed. What type of AWS resources can I use in a stack? You can currently use resources from over 20 AWS services, such as Amazon EC2, Amazon VPC, Amazon RDS, and Amazon Redshift. Can I mix and match these resources, like creating collections of different resources? Sure. You can combine and connect several different types of resources to create a stack. It could be anything from as small as a single Amazon EC2 instance to a multi-tiered application in multiple availability zones with very complex routing rules. Writing and maintaining reliable provisioning scripts is tough. Totally. And AWS CloudFormation frees you from that, so you can focus on what you need and the services and applications you build on AWS. Nice! How do I get started? You simply add the desired AWS resources and their configuration in a template and let AWS CloudFormation automatically take care of figuring out the sequence of steps required for provisioning. AWS CloudFormation calls the lower-level AWS APIs, creates and manages resource relationships, and retries the API calls on provisioning errors or timeouts. What about replicating my services and applications? Of course. Your services and applications can be replicated in any account or region of your choice. When should I use it? Anytime you're launching and configuring an AWS resource, such as an Amazon EC2 instance, and expect to launch another instance with a similar configuration. Also, when you want to provision multiple resources and create relationships among them, such as a load balancer and an auto-scaling group. Sounds great. Any other examples? Sure. For example, when you want to help your customers launch complete solutions with just a few clicks, such as a WordPress site or a Microsoft SharePoint farm. Who is using AWS CloudFormation? Developers, systems administrators, and network architects. In fact, anybody who needs to repeatedly create and manage a collection of related AWS resources can use AWS CloudFormation. What should I do first? First, you create a template, which is a JSON file that serves as a blueprint to specify the configuration of all the AWS resources that make up your infrastructure and application stack. Or you can select a sample pre-built template that AWS CloudFormation provides for commonly used architectures, such as a LAMP stack running on Amazon EC2. What do I do with a template? You use it in the AWS CloudFormation console to create a stack. How do I know whether my resource stack is being provisioned correctly? AWS CloudFormation makes sure all member resources are created or deleted as appropriate. Because AWS CloudFormation treats the stack as a single unit, 
it makes sure that all member resources are created successfully for the stack to be created. If for any reason a member resource cannot be created, AWS CloudFormation rolls the stack back and automatically deletes the member resources that were created. You can easily monitor stack events to see the progress. Is it easy to update a stack? Yes. You can update your AWS CloudFormation stack anytime by using an updated template. How do I keep track of changes to my AWS resources? If the AWS resources are modeled in AWS CloudFormation templates, you can easily apply version control, code reviews, and other time-honored software engineering principles to your company's AWS resources, the same way you apply them to your code. If you maintain a version history of your templates, you can also roll back to previous versions of their infrastructure. How much does it cost? There is no additional charge for AWS CloudFormation. You pay only for AWS resources created using AWS CloudFormation, the same way you pay for those resources when created manually. Awesome! I think I'm ready to get started. AWS provides free online training with a self-paced lab to get you started without having to open an account. That's cool. How do I take the free training? Before you get started, let me take you through a sample template by logging into my AWS account and showing you how easy it is to create a stack from the template. That'd be great. Thanks. Anyone can sign up for a free AWS account and use the AWS Management Console. Here, you can access AWS products and services, such as AWS CloudFormation. For this lab, you will use a sample template, which is already prepared. The sample template creates an Amazon EC2 instance and installs WordPress with a local MySQL database for storage on it. The sample WordPress template contains an input parameter, key name, which specifies the Amazon EC2 key pair for the Amazon EC2 instance, which is declared in the template. You'll need a valid key pair before you can use the sample template. To see your key pairs, open the Amazon EC2 console and then click Key Pairs in the navigation pane. If you don't have an Amazon EC2 key pair, create a key pair in the same region where you are creating the stack. Now let's use the WordPress template to create a stack. Click the AWS CloudFormation icon on the AWS Management Console homepage. Click Create a New Stack. The Create Stack wizard starts. Name your stack, My WP Test Stack. For the source, select Select a Sample Template. Scroll to the Single Instance Sample section in the drop down list group. Choose the WordPress blog option and click Next. On the Specify Parameters page, enter the DB password and the DB root password. Specify the DB user username and select the name of a valid Amazon EC2 key pair from the key name drop down list. We will use CloudFormation Sample, the key pair created in the earlier step. The rest of the parameters are automatically populated from the template. Click Next to continue. We won't add any tags or change the advanced options, such as notification options and the stack policy in this lab. Click Next to continue. On the next screen, click Create. AWS CloudFormation creates the resources that are specified in the template. You are automatically taken to the AWS CloudFormation console, which shows a list of your stacks. Your stack status should be Create in Progress. Do I just wait for my stack to be created, or can I see what's happening? Sure. Let me show you how easy it is to see stack's progress by viewing its events. In the AWS CloudFormation console, the Events tab displays each major event in the creation of the stack, sorted by the time of each event, with the latest events on top. You can see different events and their status, such as Create in Progress or Create Complete. After AWS CloudFormation successfully creates the stack, the status of the stack changes to Create Complete. Now, how do I start using the created resources? This sample creates a WordPress website. Let me show you how to complete the WordPress installation. On the Outputs tab, click the value for the website URL. On the web page for the WordPress installation, follow the on-screen instructions to complete the WordPress installation. 
For more information about installing WordPress, see http colon forward slash forward slash codex dot wordpress dot org forward slash installing underscore WordPress. What if I no longer need my WordPress site or stack resources anymore? Will I still be charged for the created resources? To make sure you're not charged, you can clean up your resources by deleting the stack. Let me go back to the AWS CloudFormation console and show you how easy this is. In the AWS CloudFormation console, select My WP Test Stack from the list of stacks. Click Delete Stack. In the confirmation message that appears, click Yes, Delete. The status for My WP Test Stack changes to Delete in Progress. In the same way you monitored the creation of the stack, you can monitor its deletion by using the Event tab. When AWS CloudFormation completes the deletion of the stack, it removes the stack from the list. Being able to understand your business on a deeper level based on all of your data and driving strategic decisions in real time is the essence of making big data work for you. From startups to Fortune 500 companies and worldwide public institutions, Amazon Web Services customers are running big data solutions in the cloud to gain actionable insights from their business data. Such as creating personalized medicine based on patient genetic information delivering customized content to millions of users concurrently, or analyzing billions of financial transactions daily. AWS provides a self-service model where you can have on-demand availability of compute, networking, and storage capacity at the speed of a few mouse clicks. You have the flexibility to use AWS Big Data Solutions where much of the heavy lifting of provisioning, availability, durability, recovery, and backup services are done for you. Or you can develop your own big data platform on Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud to meet your specific needs. The choice is yours. You can ingest data at any velocity from any number of sources, allowing you to process and analyze your data in near real time. Store any type of data, from unstructured data like documents and videos, to structured data such as financial transactions and key performance indicators. Analyze data at massive scale with up to thousands of servers working in parallel with software such as Hadoop, MapReduce, Hive, Pig, Spark, or many of the emerging big data solutions. You can even create a data warehouse that you can resize dynamically without downtime from a few terabytes to multiple petabytes as your needs change. Visualize and interpret your data with business intelligence and reporting tools that you're already familiar with, or explore new solutions in the big data category on the AWS Marketplace. Success with big data comes from being able to iterate on your analysis, allowing you to focus on your business needs, while not being held back by the cost and complexity of managing the IT infrastructure to collect, store, process, and visualize your data. Whatever your needs are, AWS offers a comprehensive set of services for running big data workloads in the cloud. Analyze big data faster with Amazon Web Services.
getting to your next aha moment sooner. Visit aws.amazon.com slash big dash data today to learn more about how AWS can help you work productively with data at any scale. As businesses move more computing resources into the cloud, cloud cost management has become critical to successful IT operations. Industry experts say that properly managing cloud spend can reduce Amazon Web Services expenses by 30%. The challenge for IT, DevOps, and finance teams is balancing the many AWS cost variables. These include choosing between standard, regional, or convertible reserved instances, deciding between full, partial, or no upfront payment, choosing storage types such as Glacier, EBS, and different S3 classes, deciding between spot, reserved, or on-demand instances, right-sizing resources, managing idle, unused, and underused resources, eliminating reserved instances instance mismatches, all while managing chargebacks, showbacks, and invoicing. To optimize AWS cost variables, businesses must continually ask themselves many questions about the resources they are currently using, as well as questions to identify mismatched or underutilized resources. Answering the right questions will help to optimize and balance resources, determine if rebalancing or repurchasing is needed, and optimize cost allocation and billing tasks. Doing this well requires continuous visibility and tracking, automated spend optimization, and total control over invoicing and billing. That is only possible with a cost management and automation platform. Cloud Checker Cloud Governance Platform automates critical inventory, utilization, and billing tasks, including continuous monitoring of AWS usage data, identifying idle, unused, and mismatched resources, resource resizing recommendations, reserved instance management and rebalancing, automated cost allocation in complex account scenarios, automated chargeback, automated cost alerts, advanced spend analysis, custom business views and reporting, pre-scheduled invoicing, advanced alerting, and customizable re-rating and reserve instance mapping. Companies that implement Cloud Checker cost management for AWS not only simplify cost and billing management, they see an average of five times return on their AWS investment in the first month. Contact us to discuss how Cloud Checker can help reduce your AWS bill by as much as 30%.